नमस्कार दोस्तों मैं शिवानंद उपाध्याय आपका स्वागत करता हूं हमारे यूट्यूब चैनल केमिस्ट्री एकेडमी फॉर आई टी जेई एंड नीट टूडे इज द फिफ्थ डे फॉर जेई मेन्स रिविजन एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट लिक्विड सोल्यूशन सो लेट इज स्टार्ट लिक्विड सोल्यूशन जो लोग हमारे चैनल पे नए हैं जिन्होंने इसे सब्सक्राइब नहीं किया है प्लीज सब्सक्राइब इट और अगर आपको हमारा वीडियो पसंद आता है तो प्लीज लाइक इट दो आर न्यू टू द चैनल दे कैन टेक द शेड्यूल फ्रॉम कम्युनिटी पोस्ट और आप सभी को हर लेक्चर का पी डी एफ उस लेक्चर के नीचे पिंड मैसेज में मिलेगा सो so, ये चैप्टर शुरू करने से पहले मैं आपको बता दूं कि सबसे ज्यादा क्वेश्चन जे मेंस में लिक्विड सॉल्यूशन से पूछे गए हैं तो मेंस के हिसाब से ये सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक है इट्स वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक अकॉर्डिंग टू इट इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक अकॉर्डिंग टू जे मेन्स so the first point we are going to discuss is about vapor pressure of a liquid so when we are discussing vapor pressure of a liquid there are two types of liquid a liquid will be pure or it is a liquid solution so when we are discussing about pure liquid when we place a pure liquid in a vacant container then there is no vapor form of the liquid so initially rate of condensation will be zero but rate of evaporation is there from the starting there is no change in the rate of evaporation with time so this is a fixed question regarding rate of evaporation and rate of condensation when i am putting this liquid into this container there is no vapor form of the liquid so there is no condensation condensation means gas to liquid so initially there is no gas of this liquid so there is rate of condensation initially will be zero with time since this will evaporate vapors will form so rate of condensation is going to increase with time so here if we draw rate versus time graph rate of evaporation is taking place at a constant rate because rate of evaporation depends on the surface of the liquid the number of volatile component per unit area of the liquid is not going to change because it is a pure liquid and because of that evaporation will take place at a constant rate initially there is no gas particle so rate of condensation is zero with time gas particles will increase so rate of condensation is going to increase with time and finally rate of evaporation is equal to rate of condensation at that point of time this liquid has a fixed value of vapor pressure at a fixed temperature now we know that the vapor pressure of a pure substance either it is a volatile solid or liquid only depends on temperature it is independent of amount of pure substance and shape and size of container in which it is present it only depends the number of volatile component per unit area in pure substance number of volatile component per unit area is fixed so vapor pressure is fixed we know that evaporation is an endothermic process and we know that for endothermic process if we increase the temperature reaction will move in forward direction so when we are discussing about vapor pressure of a pure substance on increasing temperature the vapor pressure of the substance is going to increase on increasing temperature the vapor pressure of the substance will increase now the third point is the vapor pressure of a liquid solution liquid solution when we discuss what is the definition of liquid solution it is a homogeneous mixture of two or more than two components present in a single phase so the vapor pressure of a liquid solution containing non volatile solute depends on the nature of the solute here nature of the solute means solute is electrolyte or solute is non electrolyte nature of the solvent means the solvent is less volatile or more volatile the third factor is temperature on increasing temperature again the vapor pressure of this liquid solution is going to increase and the fourth point is composition as we increase the number of moles of non volatile solute the vapor pressure of the solution is going to decrease so there are four factors nature of solute nature of solvent temperature and composition of the solution now here we are discussing a, a problem they are asking that in this container there is pure form of water and another container containing sugar dissolved in water temperature of this container is fixed and they are asking that what will happen after a long time what will happen after a long time so we know that since it is pure water the vapor pressure of pure water we can write that is equal to p not vapor pressure of pure water is equal to p not and this is a solution containing non volatile solute so vapor pressure will be ps 
and the value of ps is less than p naught so if value of ps is less than p naught what will happen that the water molecule from here will come here and condense and since this is pure so p naught is always greater than ps so all the water molecules from here will shift into this container finally this container will be empty this is empty and this is all the liquid water will come here and now equilibrium will establish right so this is based on the concept of vapor pressure if the vapor pressure of a system is more than water molecule from that system will move to that place where the vapor pressure is less now same type of question these type of questions are very common for j mains and advanced these are very important. So let us discuss another example. They are saying that on the left hand side, this whole thing is uh, closed and it is at temperature T. The left side is a sugar solution. Sugar dissolved in water. Molality of the solution is 5 mole per kg. Initially, they have given sugar is 5 moles and the mass of water is 1 kg in this container. On the right hand side, it is glucose dissolved in water. Molality of this solution is 2 and the number of moles of glucose is 8 and mass of water is equal to 4. So again, if we are comparing here, this uh, solution has more amount of solute and this solution we are discussing per unit kg of solvent and this solution has less amount. So we'll say that this solution is concentrated. This is concentrated solution with respect to solute and this is relatively a dilute solution so here the number of water molecules will be less and here the water molecules will be more so what will happen if we compare about the vapor pressure this is a solution so we can say that vapor pressure of this solution is one and vapor pressure of this solution is two and the vapor pressure of the second solution is greater than the vapor pressure of the first solution so what will happen that the volatile component the water molecule will move from the right hand side to left hand side till the vapor pressure of both parts will be equal so finally the vapor pressure on the left hand side solution is equal to the vapor pressure on the right hand side solution vapor pressure on the left hand side solution since solvent is water i can use raoult's law so ps is equal to p naught into mole fraction of the solvent so initially the number of moles of the solvent is equal to 1 kg. 1 kg means 1000 gram of solvent initially there divided by molar mass. So this is number of moles of solvent. Suppose we are saying that x moles of this solvent from right hand side is moving to left hand side. So we can write here x. So this is the number of moles of solvent upon total number of moles. So total number of moles means number of moles of solute that is equal to 5 plus number of moles of solvent. Solvent is 1000 divided by 18 plus x. On the right hand side again solvent is water. So we are writing p naught mole fraction of the solvent in this container. Initially, the number of moles of water is 1000 divided by 18 minus x moles of solvent is leaving the system divided by total number of moles. Total number of moles will be 8 plus 1000 divided by 18 minus x. So this P0 and P0 will cancel out and we can simplify. By simplifying this, we can find out what is the value of x. Once we get the value of x, we'll get that what amount of water will move from right hand side to left hand side. So these questions are very common in J mains as well as uh, advanced where they are discussing that vapor pressure water molecules will move from their higher vapor pressure to lower vapor pressure. So let us move further. Now we are discussing about colligative property. You know that there are four types of colligative property. The first colligative property is relative lowering of vapor pressure. Second is elevation in boiling point. Third is depression in freezing point. And fourth is osmotic pressure. So we are discussing one by one. But the first thing is that we should know that whenever we are going to study a bit about colligative property, our solute is non-volatile. If both the components are volatile, we are not going to discuss about colligative property. We are discussing colligative property when our solute is non-volatile. Now, in that case, there are two situations that our non-volatile solute may be electrolyte or non-electrolyte. So we should know that what are the examples of non-electrolyte like sugar, glucose, fructose, urea, these are non-electrolyte solute, non-volatile as well as non-electrolyte. 
And if we discuss about non-volatile and electrolyte, there are two categories like weak electrolyte or a strong electrolyte. So when we are discussing about weak electrolyte, we can say that weak acid or weak base dissolved in water. When we are discussing about a strong electrolyte, it may be strong acid, a strong base and salt in water. So about salt, one thing is important since it is given in NCRT, so we should discuss it. If nothing is mentioned about salt, then salt is assumed to be strong electrolyte. So generally like this salt is given and nothing is mentioned that how much it is dissociated. So we assume that it is 100% dissociated. If it is 100% dissociated, then vent off factor I for this salt in general, formula for dissociation of vent of factor I is equal to 1 plus N minus 1 alpha, where N is the number of particles formed by dissociation of one particle. So when this salt will dissociate, five particles will form. If alpha is equal to 1, then this 1 and this 1 will cancel out. So I is equal to N. So for this salt, if nothing is mentioned, vent of factor I is equal to 5. For HG2Cl2, many of the students can do mistakes, so be careful about that. In solution, mercurous ion exists in this form. Mercurous ion in solution will exist in this form, Hg22+. So when we are breaking Hg2Cl2, it will form Hg22+, plus, plus two types of Cl-. minus. So the number of particles formed on dissociation of one particle will be three. If nothing is mentioned, Either it is sparingly soluble or it is completely soluble. Vent of factor does not depend on solubility. Suppose if I have to say vent of factor of AgCl, AgCl is sparingly soluble in water, but whatever amount it will dissolve, it will 100% dissociate. So for AgCl, vent of factor I is equal to 2. So similarly, Hg2Cl2 is sparingly soluble in water, but its X factor is equal, uh, uh, vent of factor is equal to 3. Same way, here we can do mistake. While ionizing Ki3, there is formation of K plus ion and I3 minus ion. So there are two particles formed. So vent of factor is 2. For K2HGI4, vent of factor is equal to 3. So why we are saying that if for salt, if nothing is mentioned, uh, we assume that degree of dissociation of salt is equal to 1. Because in solution chapter, they have discussed that the degree of dissociation of salt uh, depends on concentration of the salt and on dilution, the degree of dissociation for salt solution, degree of dissociation increases on dilution. So if degree of dissociation will uh, increase, the vent of factor I will increase. So here are some data given in NCRT for sodium chloride. The values of vent of factor for different concentration of solution. Like if the molality of NaCl solution is 0.1, then its vent of factor is 1.87. When we dilute it to 0 0.01, it will become 1.94. When it will further dilute to 0 0.001 molar, it will become 1.97. Expected value is 2. But on dilution, the value of vent of factor I is increasing because the value of alpha is increasing. So if nothing is mentioned about these things, we'll assume that it is 100% dissociated. Otherwise, if they are asking, then we can say that on dilution, the vent of factor I will increase, the degree of dissociation will increase. So let us discuss the first colligative property that is relative lowering of vapor pressure. So when we are taking a volatile liquid and when we are adding a non-volatile solute into it, with the help of manometer, we can measure the pressure developed in the container. We can say that here there is a container in which a pure liquid is there. And now in this liquid, we are adding solute particle. On adding solute particle, the vapor pressure of this solution is going to change. It will going to decrease on increasing more amount of non-volatile solute. By using a manometer at different concentrations, we can find out what is the vapor pressure of this liquid solution. So this is an experimental graph. Initially, when there is no solute, we can say that the vapor pressure is equal to P0. When we add a non-volatile solute and measure it, this data will come, then this data will come, and then this data will come. If we connect these lines, points there is a formation of line so this is an experimental graph if we try to draw this experimental graph it is a straight line on y-axis there is vapor pressure of solution on x-axis there is mole fraction of solute initially there is no solute and finally 
if there is pure solute only and solute is non volatile so vapor pressure of the system is equal to zero so for this straight line the intercept on y axis is equal to p naught the slope of this line that is change in y upon change in x if change in x is equal to 1 change in y is equal to minus p naught so slope of this is equal to minus p naught and we can write what is the equation of this line y is equal to mx plus c so y is the vapor pressure of the solution which is denoted by ps slope we have calculated minus p naught x is mole fraction of solute and intercept is p naught so if i simplify p naught minus ps if i bring this ps on the right hand side and this thing on the left hand side i can write that p naught minus ps is equal to p naught into mole fraction of solute so this is lowering of vapor pressure is equal to this value we are discussing about relative lowering of vapor pressure so this is lowering if we divide by initial value that is p naught then it is relative lowering of vapor pressure so the first colligative property is low uh, relative lowering of vapor pressure is equal to mole fraction of solute so in this relative lowering of vapor pressure is equal to mole fraction of solute we can write like this p naught minus ps upon p naught is equal to mole fraction of solute or i can write the raoult's law in another form we can say from this equation using this equation if i take p naught common i can write 1 minus mole fraction of solute since it is binary solution 1 minus mole fraction of solute is mole fraction of solvent so here i can write that ps is equal to p naught into mole fraction of solvent so these both forms are known as uh, this is raoult's law this is raoult's law and this is representing colligative property relative lowering of vapor pressure is equal to mole fraction of solute so let us discuss about this lowering of vapor pressure when we are discussing lowering of vapor pressure it is p naught minus ps which dependent on p naught so if we change the temperature the value of p naught is going to increase so lowering of vapor pressure will change on changing the temperature so lowering of vapor pressure is not a colligative property but relative lowering of vapor pressure is a colligative property p naught minus ps is equal to p naught into mole fraction of solute on increasing temperature p naught minus ps will increase because the value of p naught will increase but p naught minus ps upon p naught is mole fraction of solute and we know that mole fraction does not depend on temperature it will not change on changing the temperature so this is a very common question that on changing temperature what will happen to relative lowering of vapor pressure there is no change in relative lowering of vapor pressure the third point is relative lowering of vapor pressure is used to calculate the molar mass of a non volatile solute so this is the application we are not going to discuss you know that by using this formula we can calculate mole fraction of solute is equal to number of moles of solute upon number of moles of solute plus solvent for dilute solution we can neglect the number of moles of solute in the denominator so we can write number of moles of solute upon number of moles of solvent which is equal to mass upon molar mass in numerator and denominator so other variables are given only we don't know what is the molar mass of the solute so with the help of this we can calculate the molar mass of a solute so that is the application of relative lowering of vapor pressure let us discuss the second colligative property elevation in boiling point so first we should know what is the definition of boiling point so we know that it is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a liquid is equal to external pressure so if you change the external pressure then the temperature will change because uh, if a liquid has less vapor pressure we we are heating it so that its vapor pressure becomes equals to external pressure so if you change the external pressure the boiling point of a liquid is going to change boiling takes place in an open container this statement is given in uh, gaseous state uh, if you take a bottle and you uh, close the bottle and then you heat the water then what will happen that boiling will not take place in that case if you are heating a time will come when when the density of liquid state is equal to the density of vapor state then it is known as the that liquid is at its critical condition where we cannot distinguish between liquid state and vapor state and after that we'll say that super critical fluid super critical fluid means the pressure is above pc and temperature is above tc right so boiling will always take place in an open container whenever we are making food our container is open only like in cooker also uh 
when the vapor pressure of the water is greater than atmospheric pressure plus mass of the piston, then the that that piston will blow up and vapors will go outside. So it's an open container. So boiling always takes place in open container. So let us discuss the concept. Suppose if I am in this container, left hand side container, I have taken pure water and this pure water has temperature T, so vapor pressure is P0. If I add some non-volatile solute into it, at the same temperature, this vapor pressure of the solution is PS, which is less than P0. So if I have to boil this pure water, I have to increase its vapor pressure from P0 to P external. If I have to boil this liquid solution, I have to increase its vapor pressure from PS to P external. Since PS is less than P0, so here I have to give more amount of heat energy. So that's why we are saying that there is elevation in boiling point because we want to increase the vapor pressure of the liquid and we want to make it equal to external pressure. If the vapor pressure of the liquid is less, we have to heat it more. So that's why we are saying that there is elevation in boiling point. So when we are using a cooker, what we are doing that we are changing the external pressure in an open container. If I take water in an open container and boil it then the external pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure only so when i have to boil this liquid this water i have to make the vapor pressure of this liquid is equal to atmospheric pressure but when we are keeping some lead over this container we are increasing the external pressure now external pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure plus the pressure developed due to mass m of this lead same way we are discussing about this cooker and this piston is very important because it has some mass. So when we are discussing about external pressure, this external pressure is equal to pressure due to atmosphere plus pressure due to the mass of the piston. Pressure due to the mass of the piston. If you increase the external pressure, the boiling temperature of water will increase. So in cooker, water will boil at a larger temperature due to increase in external pressure. So this is a question in J mains. They are asking that pressure cooker reduces cooking time of food explained. So you have to understand that suppose you want to make, suppose you want to boil egg, right? So boiling egg required a fixed amount of energy. Now, if you are doing that in open container, if you put egg and boil this water, what will happen that these water vapor since it is open container so the the particles of water is transferring heat energy to the egg so egg is taking energy from this water if the water of the system is going outside it means that less water molecule is involved here to transfer that heat so more time will be required to transfer the same amount of heat in an open container if we are doing the same in a closed container so in a closed container, what will happen that due to external pressure, the boiling temperature of water will increase. So here, since boiling temperature is more, so the gas particles having more kinetic energy and these gas particles are not leaving the system quickly. So more number of water molecules are transferring the same amount of energy to this egg. So more water molecules involved at high temperature transferring the energy, definitely it will take less time. So pressure cooker reduces cooking time for food because it increases the boiling temperature of water. It will take more time to cook food on Himalaya. Same concept when we are discussing like if I have to make a tea on Himalaya, on Himalaya the atmospheric pressure is less. So if the atmospheric pressure is less, the boiling point of water will decrease. So if the boiling point of water will decrease, water will leave the system more quick quickly. If the water molecule will leave the system more quickly, so in order to transfer the energy to make the food, the water molecules will be less in number. So more time will require. So that's why it will take more time to cook food on Himalaya with respect to the sea level. Boiling temperature of water is low on Himalaya with respect to sea level. We know that if we decrease external pressure, boiling temperature will change. Normal boiling temperature of a liquid is always greater than a standard boiling temperature. We know that normal boiling temperature means pressure is equal to 1 atm. A standard boiling temperature means the pressure is equal to 1 bar and we know that 1 atm is greater than 1 bar. So if the external pressure is more, the boiling temperature is more. For any liquid, its normal boiling temperature is always greater than its standard boiling temperature.
So let us discuss the colligative property that is elevation in boiling point. So here we have pure solvents and the solvent is water if nothing is mentioned. So this solvent on increasing temperature, the vapor pressure versus temperature graph for a volatile substance on increasing temperature, vapor pressure will increase. When this vapor pressure will equals to atmospheric pressure, that temperature is known as boiling temperature. So this is boiling temperature of pure water. When suppose we are here, we are here and now we are adding some non-volatile solute. So this is P0 at this particular temperature. This is the vapor pressure of pure solvent at this particular temperature. When you add solute, the vapor pressure of the solution will always less than. So we are discussing at some temperature T dash. Initially, it was pure solvent. Now we have added solute. So this is the vapor pressure of the solution. Now again, for this liquid solution, we want to boil it. So we'll heat this solution. We'll heat till its vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. So at this particular temperature, the vapor pressure of this liquid solution is equal to atmospheric pressure. So the difference of these two is known as elevation in boiling point. And elevation in boiling point is directly proportional to concentration. Since we are changing the temperature, molality is independent of temperature. That's why we are writing the concentration term molality. So we can say that elevation in boiling point is directly proportional to molality. And Kb is known as molar elevation constant. It is a proportionality constant. So the value of Kb is important. If you go through your NCRT, they have given this value. So that there is derivation, but that is useless. It will waste only the time. So I'm directly discussing the formula Kb is equal to R into molar mass of the solvent into boiling point of pure solvent in Kelvin whole square divided by 1000 times of delta H vaporization of pure solvent. So this Kb is the characteristic property of the solvent. It is independent of concentration of solution, nature of solute. It only depends on the solvent. So a simplified form, if I take R in calorie, delta H vaporization in calorie, then R divided by 1000, 2 divided by 1000 is 0 0.002. If I take the molar mass of the solvent in the denominator, heat of vaporization is the amount of heat required to vaporize one mole of a substance. If I divide by molar mass of the solvent, it means that amount of heat required to vaporize one gram of a substance. That is known as latent heat of vaporization. So the unit of latent heat of vaporization is calorie per gram. So this is the simplest form. Kb is equal to 0 0.002 T naught D whole square divided by latent heat of vaporization. You can also write the value of R in terms of 8.314. Then here, the latent heat of vaporization is in joule per gram. So be careful about the units. For water, if it is not mentioned, generally it is mentioned that what is the value of Kb, but if it is not mentioned, you should remember that Kb for water is 0.52 and unit you can write. So from here, unit of Kb is temperature difference that may be Kelvin degree Celsius and molality unit is mole per kg. So you can write that Kelvin kg per mole, that is the unit of molar elevation constant. This molar elevation constant is also known as ebullioscopic constant. So when we are writing this delta Tb is equal to Kb into molality, I have written molality actual because there are two type of non-volatile solute. Non-volatile solute may be a non-electrolyte or it may be an electrolyte. If it is a non-electrolyte, then the vent of factor I is equal to 1. But if it is an electrolyte, then we know that value of I is equal to 1 plus n minus 1 alpha, where n is number of particles obtained on dissociation of one particle. So we are using this formula to calculate elevation in boiling point. Now, same way in case of association. So let us take an example that when benzoic acid is present in benzene due to hydrogen bonding, this is a very common question. So for benzoic acid, if I draw the structure of benzoic acid, this is the structure of benzoic acid. So with one molecule of benzoic acid and another molecule of benzoic acid, there is possibility of hydrogen bonding. And because of this hydrogen bonding, it exists in the form of dimer. It exists in the form of dimer. And if you go through your NCRT, they have discussed an example where this is almost 100% dimerized. So degree of association beta is equal to 1 for this reaction. So in this is uh, the case of Venta factor in case of 
एसोसिएशन वी राइट वेंट ऑफ एक्टर आई इज इक्वल टू वन प्लस वन अपॉन एन माइनस वन बीटा इफ बीटा इज इक्वल टू वन दिस वन एंड वन विल कैंसिल आउट सो आई इज इक्वल टू वन बाई एन सो फॉर डायमराइजेशन एन इज इक्वल टू टू फॉर ट्राइमराइजेशन एन इज इक्वल टू थ्री एंड सो ऑन सो यू शुड रिमेंबर दैट बेंजोइक एसिड इन बेंजीन विल डायमराइज और एसेटिक एसिड इन बेंजीन इज डायमराइज बाई हाइड्रोजन बॉन्डिंग द थर्ड colligative properties depression in freezing point so everyone knows what is the definition of boiling point boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid is equal to atmospheric pressure what is freezing point freezing point and melting point is same in order to melt we are giving heat energy in order to freeze we are taking heat energy so they are reversible process but freezing point we talk about liquid and melting point we talk about solid so they are same right so when we are discussing freezing point or melting point freezing point is the condition of temperature and pressure where liquid and solid form of a substance are in equilibrium suppose the substance is volatile for volatile substances like water at freezing point the vapor pressure of solid form of the substance and vapor pressure of the liquid form of the substance when we are discussing that at freezing point there is an equilibrium between h2o in liquid state and h2o in solid state and this h2o is volatile so it has vapor pressure so this equilibrium is also there and this h2o solid is also volatile so this equilibrium is also there so if this solid and liquid is equilibrium it means that the vapor pressure of liquid and the vapor pressure of solid is equal so in ncert if you go you will find that this is vapor pressure versus temperature graph when they are discussing depression in freezing point so this point is important vapor pressure of liquid form of the substance is equal to vapor pressure of solid form of the substance at equilibrium at freezing and melting point so suppose we are discussing about pure water so pure water this is in solid state and this is in liquid state when the vapor pressure of solid and liquid state of pure water will be equal that temperature is known as freezing temperature of pure solvent pure water now what will happen suppose we are here and we have added some solute when we add some solute what will happen the solution freezing the solution vapor pressure will be less than that of the liquid water vapor pressure so this is the new liquid whose vapor pressure is this and when there is an equilibrium this vapor pressure of liquid solution should be equal to the vapor pressure of ice and you should know that when we are talking about variation of vapor pressure with temperature here heat of vaporization of this liquid solution will come for this solid heat of sublimation will come and heat of sublimation is always greater than heat of vaporization that's why this graph is more steep if we decrease the temperature the decrease in vapor pressure of ice will be more uh, steep more fast while the decrease in the vapor pressure of liquid solution will be slow so the temperature will come when the vapor pressure of this ice is equal to the vapor pressure of this liquid solution this temperature is known as freezing point of solution already in j advance they have asked that at freezing point who two chemical species are in equilibrium so the solid form of the solvent is in equilibrium between the, with the liquid form solid form of solvent and liquid form of solvent are in equilibrium right liquid and solid form is in and this is for solvent are in equilibrium right so this is depression in freezing point delta tf so when we are writing delta tf we again we know that if we add more solute then delta tf will be more so delta tf is directly proportional to molality or some proportionality constant kf into molality delta tf is equal to kf into molality this kf is known as molar depression constant means when molality is one numerically kf is equal to delta tf or this is also known as cryoscopic constant same way you should remember that what is the formula of kf so kf is equal to r into molar mass of the solvent freezing point of the solvent in kelvin whole square divided by 1000 times of delta h fusion fusion is melting sometimes here minus sign will be there in place of fusion they will write freezing so if the value of r is equal to 2 calorie per kelvin per mole and delta h fusion is in calorie if i i bring this molar mass of the solvent in denominator 
then I can write this value Kf is equal to 0 0.002 T naught F whole square divided by latent heat of fusion. Latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat energy required to melt one gram of the solid. So let us discuss the, we have discussed three colligative properties. So elevation in boiling point and depression in freezing point. We are doing one question which is very common in J mains, right? Many times they have asked this question. So let us solve this question. So the first example is a glucose solution in 100 gram water boils at 100.26 degrees Celsius. If, if this solution is heated to 100.1 degrees Celsius, determine the mass of water left at equilibrium. Kb for water is given that is 0.52 Kelvin kg per mole. So initially when the solute is added, so glucose solution has a boiling point of 100.26. So elevation in boiling point is equal to 0.26. So delta Tb is equal to Kb into molality. From here, if I calculate molality, delta Tb initially is 0.26 and Kb is 0.52. So molality of this solution is half. So molality is equal to half. That is equal to number of moles of glucose upon mass of the water that is 100 gram into 1000. So from there we can calculate what is the number of moles of glucose that is 1 by 20. So when this balling is taking place and our solute is non-volatile. So what we are discussing here that our solute is homogeneously distributed in the solution. And now we are heating on heating. What will happen that the water molecule will go away but the solute will remain inside it. So there is no change in the number of moles of solute because our solute is non-volatile. So here, when we heat and uh, the water molecules will go away, molality of the solution is going to increase. If the molality of the solution is going to increase, then elevation in boiling point is going to increase. So at 101 degrees Celsius, the change in boiling point or increase in boiling point is equal to 1. So delta Tb is equal to 1. That is equal to Kb into molality. Molality is number of moles of glucose upon mass of water left in 2000. So if we further simplify from here, we can write that mass of water left is equal to Kb value is 0.52. Number of moles of glucose already we have calculated 1 by 20 in 2000. So 26 gram of water is left. Means 74 gram of water will leave the system. So in case of pure substance, when we are heating a pure substance, boiling temperature will remain same. It will remain same. But in case of solution containing non-volatile solute, if you heat the system, the boiling temperature of the resulting solution will be continuously changing because composition is continuously changing. The solvent is going away from the system. The amount of solvent is decreasing. So based on the same concept, let us solve a question which is very common in depression in freezing point. This question came in J means two, three times. So I'm discussing one example. A solution of sucrose in 100 gram of water freezes at minus 0.2 degrees Celsius. On further cooling to minus 0.25 degrees Celsius, some amount of ice separates. Calculate the mass of ice separated in gram. Here they have not given the value of Kf. In above problem also there is no need to give the value of Kb. So how it is not required we can see here that initially the depression in freezing point is equal to Kf into initial molality and finally the depression in freezing point is Kf into final molality. So Kf and Kf will cancel out. Initial uh, depression in freezing point is 0.2 and final depression in freezing point is 0.25. So 0.2 upon 0.25. 1000 will cancel out. The mass of solvent initially is 100 and finally we have to calculate. In this whole process, the solute will remain same. J advanced question that when freezing is taking place, who are the two chemical species which are in equilibrium? So solid form of solvent that is ice and the solvent, they are in equilibrium. Liquid and solid form of the solvent are in equilibrium. Solute will remain same in the solution. It is not going to change on freezing. So because of that, this number of moles of solute initially and finally will cancel out. And if we simplify that, we can write that this water final will go in numerator. So we can write that water left finally upon 100 is equal to 4 by 5. By simplifying, we are getting that final amount of water left is 80 gram. Means 20 gram of ice 
or water is separated in the form of I. So these are very common question, right? So it is not required that in the question KF is given or here in the above question KB is given. KF and KB is not required to solve the problem. It will cancel out, right? So till now we have discussed up to three colligative properties. Now the fourth colligative property is osmotic pressure. So first we have to discuss that what is osmosis? So when we are discussing about osmosis, osmosis is movement of solvent particles from their higher concentration towards lower concentration through semi-permeable membrane. This semi-permeable membrane may be an animal membrane like a pig bladder or it can be a plant membrane that is known as parchment membrane or it can be a syn synthetic membrane, cellulose membrane, right? So through this semi-permeable membrane, when the solvent particles are moving from their higher concentration towards lower concentration, this process is known as osmosis. So let us take an example here, one container and the other container, one container left hand side container containing pure water at the same height, right hand side, a solution containing non-volatile solute is there and the label of liquid on both sides will be same initially. Now what will happen? Because if I take a unit volume on this side and unit volume on this side, here only water molecules are there. So per unit volume, the water molecules will be more here. Here it is a solution. So in this volume, it contains solvent as well as solute particles. So obviously the number of solvent particles will be less in this volume. So solvent particles will always move from their higher concentration to our, towards lower concentration. Anything which can move, it will always move from their high, higher concentration towards lower concentration. So we know what is osmosis, right? When osmosis, water molecules are moving from their higher concentration towards lower concentration. Now, because of this movement, what will happen if we allow it for a long time, then the height of water in this pipe will decrease and the height of water in this pipe is increased. And because of this difference, there is a pressure due to the difference in this liquid and we know that how to calculate uh, the pressure due to liquid column. So pressure is equal to rho gh. So this pressure is known as osmotic pressure. So this is an old way to find out what we are doing here that we are giving enough time so that all the water molecules which want to go from here to here will go, right? And after when there is no change in the height, we'll find out what is the pressure developed due to this height difference, that pressure is known as osmotic pressure. But nowadays we are using a technique, we don't have to wait for a long time. What we'll do that, in order to stop osmosis, we'll put a piston over here and apply some external force. So in applying force, we are compressing this liquid. On compressing this liquid, we are making the number of solvent particles per unit volume more. When the number of solvent particles per unit volume on the left hand side and right hand side will be equal, then osmosis will stop. So whatever the minimum external pressure we are applying here is known as osmotic pressure. So this is the minimum pressure, right? If we further increase the pressure, what will happen? That solvent particles from right hand side will move towards left hand side. This is known as reverse osmosis. Because here, because of applying pressure, the solvent particles are moving from their less concentration to more concentration. I'm talking in terms of solvent. If I'm talking in terms of solution, we can say that the solvent particles will move from their high from higher concentration solution to lower concentration solution that is known as reverse osmosis so we know that it is diffusion diffusion is directly proportional to temperature diffusion is movement of particles from their higher to lower concentration so osmotic pressure is directly proportional to temperature osmotic pressure is directly proportional to concentration of the solution more solute means the difference in concentration of solute and solvent will be more, diffusion will be more. So this S is proportionality constant and its value is equal to universal gas constant. So we can write that pi is equal to CRT or CST. So already we have discussed that what is osmosis. In osmosis, there is movement of water from salt solution towards pure water through semi... Okay, so they are discussing what is the meaning of reverse osmosis. So in reverse... In reverse osmosis is used to purify water. So when uh, impure water containing many salt is moving 
towards pure water, then it is reverse osmosis, right? So when we are discussing about osmosis, we should know that this is an NaCl solution. In NaCl solution, there is Na plus ion in aqueous state. Na plus ion in aqueous state means this Na plus ions are surrounded by water molecule. Same way Cl minus ions means Cl minus ions are surrounded by water molecule. If I am saying that sucrose dissolved in water means sucrose molecules are surrounded by water molecule. So if you compare that in a solution, solute particle is bigger or solvent particle is bigger. So you should know that solute particle is bigger than solvent particle because solute particles are surrounded by many solvent particles. And that's why through semi-permeable membrane, there is no passes of solute particle. There is passes of solvent particles. So in osmosis, solvent particles move through semi-permeable membrane. Now, we are discussing some concept of osmosis. The first one is in pickling. What we do that we take a raw, ma raw mango and we put into salt, mixture of salt. So it is like salt solution. And salt solution means it is hypertonic because osmotic pressure, we use the term pi is equal to CRT. If two solutions have same osmotic pressure, so we'll say isotonic solution. If a solution has more osmotic pressure, then it is known as hypertonic solution. If a solution has less osmotic pressure, then it is known as hypotonic solution. So when we are discussing here endoosmosis and exoosmosis, what is happening that in raw mango, there is also solution inside the mango. And we are putting outside in a salt solution, right? So we are comparing inside solution with outside solution. And salt solution contains more salt, means less water. Inside the raw mango, water will be more. So water will move from their higher concentration to our lower concentration. So from this piece, if the water is moving outside, it is known as exoosmosis. Because of ex exoosmosis, shrinking will take place. So this uh, mango piece will uh, decrease in size. So this mango solution, mango piece, raw mango has a solution that solution is known as hypotonic because the concentration of solute is less water is more so it is hypotonic solution the solution which is present outside salt solution is hypertonic so or uh, when osmosis is taking place solvent particle will always move from hypotonic solution to hypertonic solution so this is the concept of pickling already asked in je mains right same type of question i think they have asked that if we put a sugar cane in water. This is pure water. Sugar cane means water containing sugar. So obviously, if I talk in terms of osmotic pressure, osmotic pressure of water is less. Osmotic pressure of sugar solution or cane sugar will be more. So what will happen that the water molecule from their higher concentration will move towards where the concentration is low. So here solute inside is more means solvent is less. So this is going inside. So it is known as endoosmosis. Due to endoosmosis, swelling will take place. So in plant cell or our body cell, this, this is also happening. So in plants and our body, a lot of water is there. And osmosis is taking place through our body cells or plant cells. So when we are discussing about endoosmosis, in case of endoosmosis, in case of endoosmosis, when the solvent particles will go inside it may possible that this whole thing will burst out so endoosmosis rupturing of a cell due to endoosmosis is known as cytolysis cytolysis is a general term for a cell so due to swelling the cell get rupture or bursting of cell is known as cytolysis if the cell is body cell like rbc so it will burst then hemoglobin will produce so then it is known as hemolysis so cytolysis and hemolysis is because of endoosmosis. So when we remove organ from our body to transplant to another body, we keep that organ in a solution. That solution is NaCl solution. So you should know that 0.9% mass by volume because we are measuring osmotic pressure. So this is concentration mass by volume. 0.9% mass by volume of NaCl solution is isotonic with RBC. Osmotics takes place from hypotonic solution to hypertonic. In hypotonic, solute is less, solvent is more. In hypertonic, solvent is less and solute is more. So, osmosis always takes place from hypotonic to hypertonic solution. So, friends... लिक्विड सॉल्यूशन को हमने टू पार्ट्स में डिवाइड किया है क्योंकि ये लेक्चर बहुत लंबा हो रहा था तो फर्स्ट पार्ट में हमने 
पहली चार क्वालिगेटिव प्रॉपर्टी को डिस्कस किया है अगर आपको ये वीडियो पसंद आया तो प्लीज इसको लाइक करें इससे हमें बहुत सपोर्ट मिलता है थैंक यू